Hello everyone, in this week's After Effects scripting tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to recreate shape layers using a script. And we'll be using a few different techniques to go through and add custom contents with things like rounded corners and adding custom shapes with a stroke and a fill. And basically reverse engineering these will allow you to create any kind of shape layer you want from scratch with just a few lines of code from a script. After you learn these techniques, you'll be able to recreate pretty much any shape layer you want and learn how to basically reverse engineer any of these properties that we've applied. So I'm gonna get started by opening a new JavaScript file and we're just gonna start by looking at our layer inside of After Effects. We're gonna start with this hexagon shape layer. We basically have a couple things. It's a standard shape layer and it has a hexagon inside of the contents with the polystar path, which refers to how many uh, sides everything has basically. So we can change what kind of shape it is. And this also contains information like the position, rotation, and radius. So if any of these values are changed and you want to make them custom when we're creating this, we can basically change any of the points, position, or any of these values we want. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and create a few lines of code to represent standard variables inside of After Effects. We're gonna need one for the project and one for the composition. So for the project, we're gonna say that's gonna be equal to app.project. And then a composition, we're going to assume there's a composition open. So we'll say our project and the active item. So before we run the script, we wanna make sure we have a comp selected and active. You also have the option of saying after this, um, well, what if it's not active? If comp is equal to null, basically, if uh, this variable, our active item, ends up being null, that means there's nothing selected. If that's the case, let's create a new comp. So I'm going to say comp equals our project.items. We're going to add a comp. And now's a good time to break open the scripting guide. We'll just type in add comp, and we need a couple of things here. We need the name. So we'll just call this test comp, the width, the height, the pixel aspect ratio, the duration, and the frame rate. So basically when we run the script the first time, it's gonna check if there's something active, if there's a composition active. If there isn't, if it's null, if there's nothing really in that variable, we're gonna add a composition ourselves. And now we can go ahead and grab our comp and say open in viewer. And this will basically ensure that we have a composition ready to add our shape layer into. So now if I go back into the scripting guide and type in add shape, we can use this to add our shape layer. So I'll grab my composition and I'll say add, or I'll say comp.layers.addShape. And there's actually no argument required because there's a lot of custom things we can do with this shape. We basically need to go in and add our own properties inside of this now empty shape layer. We also want to give this a variable, so I'll just say shape layer is equal to comp.layers.addShape. We can also give it a name. So we can say shape layer.name, and referring back to our project here, we have just a hexagon. So we're going to be recreating a hexagon as our first shape layer. So what we need to do now is learn how we can sort of look into this project here and reverse engineer it. So what I'm gonna do is open up a new JavaScript file again, and I'm gonna make sure it's linked to After Effects. And now the same thing, I'm gonna make a variable for the project and one for the composition. And then to start reverse engineering, we need to get our hexagon layer as well. So it's layer number three. So we're just gonna say layer equals comp.layer3. And just to make sure we're getting the right layer here, we're going to alert the layer name. And you can see we're getting hexagon layer one. So now we can go ahead and go deeper into the hexagon layer, into the contents, and uh, reverse engineer it. So now I'm gonna go ahead and test this original script to see what our empty shape layer looks like. So I'm gonna run it, and you can see we have our hexagon layer here. If I make sure I have a no comp selected and I run it, you can see it's gonna open a new comp and create our hexagon shape layer, which is currently empty. It does have the contents, but if we look at our other one, it doesn't have this hexagon or the polystar path, and these are the properties we need to engineer essentially now. So let's go ahead 
and see how we can do this back in our other one. Since we have a layer variable, we can now go in and check out what the values and properties are of our layer. So we're talking about our hexagon layer here, and we want to first check out the contents. So what I'm about to explain is essentially the way I reverse engineer all this stuff. If I want to learn how to add a hexagon, or I want to learn how to add a polystar path property, this is how you do it. You first want to grab your layer or whatever object you want to grab the property for. And now we're going to go level by level down until we get all the properties we want. So what I'm going to do instead of alerting it is I'm going to say write line so we can see it in the JavaScript console and copy and paste it if we need. So I'm going to say the layer dot property. And the first property we want to go down into is our contents. So I'll type in contents and I'm just going to go ahead and run this and see what it gives me you can see we get an object property group. This is telling us that something is indeed there and we can even say dot name and we should get contents. So, yep, we're getting contents because that's obviously the contents property. Now we need to actually get what's called the match name. If you're not familiar, the match name is sort of the built-in After Effects language version of what anything is. When you're applying effects or fonts to things with scripts in After Effects, you need to use the match names. That way uh, it essentially recognizes it and applies it properly. So if we wanted to say add these contents, add another contents property, we couldn't say dot add contents. We need to actually know what the match name is, not the regular name. So if I run this, you can see we get something called Adobe Root Vectors Group. So that's actually what the contents group is really called. If we ever wanted to do something with it, we need to refer to this, not the name that we see as a user. But the contents group already exists, so we need to continue diving deeper to get the next properties. And you can see the hexagon, which we need to recreate, is the actual next property. So what we can do now is move on from contents and grab the next property. Because I'm not sure what the property might be called, it's obviously called hexagon, but there might be a hidden property as well. So let's grab property one and grab the name. So now we're going down into the contents and whatever the first property is, one of these I'm guessing, let's get the name of it. So you can see we're getting hexagon as I predicted. Well, let's go ahead and get the match name for that so we can recreate it. It looks like it's just called Adobe Vector Group, which is accurate because this is essentially just a group holding a bunch of stroke and path information which creates the shape. So to recreate it, the first thing we're going to need is to add an Adobe Vector Group and we need to name it Hexagon. So what I'm going to do is go back into my main script here where I'm recreating it. And with our shape layer selected, I'm going to create a new variable called Hexagon Group. This is going to be representative of this group right here with our hexagon in it. And then I'm going to say this is equal to our shape layer and we're going to go into the property contents. And uh, again, this exists already. And what we wanna do is add that Adobe vector group. So I'm going to copy and paste this match name. And for the contents, I'm gonna add a property called Adobe vector group. So we're gonna basically take our shape layer, go down to the contents and add something called an Adobe vector group. It's not going to be called hexagon yet. So to actually show this, we can run it. And if we scroll down here to contents, we now have a group with transform and material options within it. But we need to actually change the name of this to be hexagon within our script. And also, so I don't have to undo each of these a thousand times over and over, I'm going to add an app.begin undo group. And of course, I'm going to add an app.end undo group. We should be creating a separate function to run all this, but we're fine in this case. So now we have our hexagon group added. What we can do to simply change the name is take the variable hexagon group, and I'm gonna say the name is equal to hexagon. And now if we go back, we now need to get a polystar path one, a stroke one, and a fill one, and a rounded corners property on this shape layer. How are we gonna do that? Well, we're gonna dive back into our other script and keep going levels deep. So we know property one now is called hexagon. So we don't have to refer to it as property one so we don't get confused as we go deeper and deeper into the, the layer stack here. So now we're gonna be in contents and hexagon. Let's see what the next property down is called. So I'm gonna grab property one after that and grab the name and I'll go ahead and run this. So now we're getting the name blend mode and I don't actually see anything called blend mode 
So what that means is it's a hidden property and it's actually one we don't want. So instead, let's go to the next number and try property two. Property two gives us contents again, um, and there's not really any contents inside of here I can see, but if we try three, we're gonna get transform, which looks like is this property right here. If we try four, we're gonna get material options, which are also another hidden thing that involve uh, 3D layers. If we try five, it looks like it's out of range and there's no more properties. So out of all of these, which of the ones do we think we need to go into to get more properties like the fill and stroke? Well, the transform is probably not gonna have that and the blending mode's not, so let's go into the contents. That was property two, yes. So let's get the match name and it's just called Adobe Vector Groups as well. So I'm gonna replace two here with uh, contents again and I'm just gonna keep diving in here in, until I see something that I recognize. Cause I need to see either polystar path or stroke or fill. So I'm gonna go down another level into the next contents and now I'm getting polystar path. So what this is basically saying is that we added this first hexagon group, but within that hexagon group, there's sort of another hidden group called contents, which is containing polystar path and all of this. So. I don't think when we recreate it, we need to add this other contents, but we do need to reference it. So to get the polystar path, let's get the match name instead of the regular name so we can add it like we did before. And that name is Adobe Vector Shape dash star. Now I'm gonna go on to the next couple properties. You can see we have stroke one, stroke one, which is property two and fill one, which is property three. So let's go ahead and grab those match names too and then we should be off to the races to add these. So the match name for stroke is Adobe Vector Graphic dash stroke, and I imagine fill is very similar. Yes, very much the same. So now what we can do is create a couple of variables for each of these. We need one to control the polystar path, the stroke, and the fill. So I'll create one called path group, one called stroke group, and one called fill group. And for each of these, I'm going to do something very similar take my shape layer contents, and then we need to go a couple layers deeper, remember? It goes contents, and then at this point it's called hexagon, and then after the hexagon group, again, there's kind of like an invisible one we discovered called contents again. So let's say dot property contents. Now inside of these contents to add our polystar path, we're gonna add a property, and the name for that was Adobe Vector Shape star. So we'll add that property and close out the brackets. Then we'll do the same thing for the stroke and fill group. Only difference being this time we need to add uh, these match names rather than the star. All right, so let's do a quick test run and see how far we've gotten. So now we actually have a star appearing. If we go down into our content options, we have our hexagon, our polystar path, our stroke and our fill. Now the final thing that's left to do after we've done the basic reverse engineering, creating all the groups and things, now we need to do is adjust any of the values as we want it. This is a star right now. It obviously needs to be a hexagon. So the next thing in the process is we need to take our polystar path group and change star to polygon. And then to get a hexagon, of course we need six sides. So we need to change those two values and then we should be good unless you want to go in further and change things like the color of the fill. So what I can do is after I have created my path group, I'm going to grab path group, which references our polystar path one. And now we can go down into the polystar path properties and just set the values like we would with position or anything normal in After Effects. So I'll grab path group and I'll grab the property called type and I'm gonna set the value to something. And since it's a dropdown, we're gonna set it to either one or two in this case, and we want it to be two, so it's a polygon. And then we also want to change the number of points. So I'm going to duplicate this line, change type to points, and change it from two, and since it's a hexagon, we want six. All right, so now let's finally test this out and see if it's working all right. Go ahead and run it. And now we're accurately getting our hexagon here. It's got the proper properties inside of it. It's turned into a six-sided polygon, 
and any other properties you wanted to go in and fix, you could simply go in and do things like change the fill, add expressions to things, and do whatever you want to recreate it entirely. But that's the basic concept of how you can reverse engineer anything by going down into the properties itself and checking out what the match names are and exploring what the different properties and their relationship are. But yeah, that's gonna do it for this week's After Effects scripting tutorial, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to smash the thumbs up button. And to be notified of new videos coming out every Monday and Thursday, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified of when those come out. But thanks again for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next one.